Blessed love, honorable empress. Blessed love, my lord. Warm welcome, honorable empress, goddess Isis. Well, go on, everything good? Everything up for my lord. How's the eye? How's the moon? How's everything? Yes, sir. Everything is great, man. Give thanks. Yes, my sister. Uh, yeah, man, it's great for you to have the hype on the program here today. The Afro Diaspora Connection, all the way from out of Botswana. Such an honor for me to be here. Give, give thanks. Yes, I Great honor. Great honor, my sister. Yeah, man. Yes, great I. honor. Great mm -hmm. honor. Oh. Yes, and you know. This this connection is um you know it's within its true the 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 true sense of the word itself or the old name you know the Afro um diaspora connection because I and I is out here in the diaspora and you know the the, the eyes there you know on the continent you know what I mean yes I yes I so. You know, we give thanks to um, we give thanks to this um connection, you know, this um guidance from the most I also, yes, the last year the first, you know. And Pris Men and I. Rastafari. Yes, my yes, sister. Yeah, yeah man. So what are going on? What we are dealing with today on the program. Yes. I'm from Moose Goddess Isis, live and direct from Botswana. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you enjoy what I have cooked up for you tonight. Um, tonight on the show, we are discussing issues of spirituality and we are exploring African spirituality. And our discussion is centered around the role played by African spirituality in modern day society. And uh, we're also trying to establish if, like, if the modern day Africans still hold it with the same regard as our ancients, is it still being applied in our daily, in our day to day life? And over the past few days, I have been engaging with some people from around Botswana, South Africa, and even across UK, you know. Afro diaspora connection, that's all we're about. Yes, sir. And um, I'd love to hear your overall views and reasoning on this. So feel free to hit me up on my WhatsApp line, plus 267-729-84692, or on my Facebook at uh, Pumulo Maseha, or Instagram at goddess underscore Isis. And while you're still getting in touch, let's hear from some of the massives who have already engaged on this particular topic and sent through the voice notes. Yeah, so, yeah, like I say, remember, we're discussing issues of African spirituality. Yes, I, over to the I. Rastafari. Yes, yes. Bye, um, which means greetings. <laughs> My name is Lindue Sangweni, currently based um, in KZN in a small remote um, village, but I'm originally from Johannesburg. But funny enough, actually, I'm here because I'm actually in training into becoming an African traditional healer. So my my, my spirituality is that I'm an African spiritualist. So this topic really hits home for me because, and I'd love to explain it from an aspect of being a person who is in training into becoming um, a traditional healer. So if I could please explain it from that angle. So for me, the, the role that it's really playing right now, um, African spirituality, is that um, a lot of young people, what I've noticed in South Africa, a lot of people are being called um, into initiation school to become healers. And with that, um, there's diff many different reasons why somebody would have to go to an initiation school or to a healer to get helped with um, their spiritual problems. So right now, there's a huge or large case 
of young people who are being called to kind of find out who they are. Not every single one is going to be an actual healer, but many people now going through the process kind of find out about themselves and their identity and who they are, you know, where they're from, um, so that that gives them the power you know, to take their ownership and take their place, you know, in this world, which is something that has been stripped away from us because we've had so many other um, identities kind of put onto us, you know, and enforced onto us that we've kind of lost, you know, lost ourselves. So the role that it's playing right now is bringing back um, the senses or the sense um, to our people, um, which is a beautiful thing because, like, right now, um, what you witness is a lot of young people wearing some ancestral cloths of their clans with pride. You know what I mean? Even though they're rocking that Nike, but they've got this very cool outfit that's being made um, to actually show off with who they are, you know, <laughs> where they're from, you know, and which, which pulse or vibration um, they, they walk with. So it's a beautiful thing. It's giving them power. It's giving them... Um, um, courage, it's giving them um, what else? It's giving them, like I said, the senses, which is something that we've lost, you know, as Africans. We've lost our senses as Africans. So, African spirituality brings back those senses back to us. Um, in terms of are we practicing things the same way, um, like how our ancients did, um, from a, again, from a perspective of someone who's in initiation school, I can safely say that, yes, some of the practices have not really changed much. You know what I mean? Because there's a basic principle of, of a specific um, ritual or whatever the case is that has to be kept kind of the same way because it's like the stencil um, of what our ancestors did. But certain aspects of them uh, have evolved. And a lot of the time, somebody, you know, depending on the ancestor, because again, for African spirituality, it's very important for you to connect with your ancestors. Therefore, um, some ancestors will, if you communicate well enough with them, you can actually say, hey, you know what, guys, this thing is not working like this anymore. Can you please give me another way of how to do this? Or can I please suggest that we do one, two, and three? And then ancestors will come back with an answer and say, you know what, bro, okay, let's do this. Because obviously, clearly, because we're the ones, they can't see anything. They can't really see much. You know what I mean? They work with a vibration. So we become the voice that kind of brings the change, you know, into these African spiritual practices and, and beliefs. So, yeah, so it's it's... A lot of the things are not stagnant, you know what I mean, which is something that I always like to, to tell people, especially a lot of healers, that things are not going to stay the same, especially in African spirituality. Yes, there's the stencil, in which what we call it in, in Zulu, Usigo, you know what I mean, which is like the stencil, you know, but you can have a stencil, but then you can decorate it, right? You can trace back, you can trace and do whatever and, and, and create the shape but you can add more value to that shape and that's basically our job actually as as young people so yeah big ups i'd like to send a huge shout out um to my friends in johannesburg and my family in johannesburg to um to the family that i'm staying with um Baratuma, big ups guys and big ups to the rest of the nation guys big ups to the red yellow green by the way those are my my main colors in terms of my healing practice so yeah <laughs> there's a connection there yeah guys so big ups shout out to you too poems <laughs> rastafari powerful powerful um powerful reasoning from the sister you know what I mean? Um, I love um, one of the things I may find very interesting is you know she has said boy you know we lose our senses and our touch with the with with the ancients, you know. Yes, I. Yes, I. And she also she also mentioned that um, African spirituality basically as a tradition it shouldn't be in the past and it should be used as a stencil. You know that paves the way forward as we evolve still as Africans. So that's the bit where she touched on decorating the stencils and on that, and very powerful points. And yeah, Lynn, currently undergoing through her own spiritual African spiritual journey. She's an initiate. So yeah, thank you so much for your points, Lindy. Way. Yes, I yeah man, big up, big up my sister man. Large up all the ones um. The ones them out there in Johannesburg, South Africa right now. So they are them log on. Large up all the people in Germany also. You know what I mean? Um Jamaica, um Botswana, 
You know what I mean? And as a man, yes. I study them. Yes, all people in the UK, yes, more love and strength. Yes, my sister. Yeah, man. So, yeah, very interesting. Um, very interesting um, thing, you know, sister point out. You know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't lose our value. The things them shouldn't, you know, be in the past. But I think what one one of the things that um anyway let, let me play one of the voice notes then we come to what i want to say let me play mm. another voice note yeah. hi i'm avumile from south africa and my take on this whole topic is that african spirituality in this day and age isn't as relevant as it was in ancient times not because it really lacks substance or value but because of things like our history take colonization for instance and we currently have globalization as a means of interconnection so african spirituality is seen as demonic or bad and is mainly associated with witchcraft and evil spirits there are still people who practice some african beliefs but they still approach it with how can i put it with a christian background and in turn it's not really practiced in its purest and most original form and currently there's this term that's been going around it's called being woke and to a certain degree i feel that people only want to fake practice their africanacity or african beliefs just so they can be viewed as woke it's become a trend really that's how i just see it and people no longer do it because it's a way of life but because they want to be seen as cool so in essence i feel that african spirituality isn't what it used to be because of histo historical factors and the world in which we currently live in and it's definitely not being applied in our daily lives yeah that's my take on it thank you hi I yeah reality you know you know reality <laughs> re re reality believe you me because you know that that's what me did i was say um before and you know this you know the data does kind of you know does does kind of clear it up in a sense because today african spirituality has seen is seen as witchcraft and demonic you know that 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 is how it's portrayed because of um in this western you know this the western religion which is uh christianity you know what i mean yeah so you know Very, it, um yeah, you know, practicing a you know a true and um, pure form as the sister said for real. Yeah. Yeah, well, reality um, man. Where do I view? Well, um, I think it is a very really important and interesting point that she, you know, she approached this with because, um, definitely. What we see now being called African spirituality, I don't think it's what the ancients really practiced. I don't think it's the original African spirituality because like there has been some infiltrations from colonization yes. and currently we're dealing with globalization, like like she said. Mm -hmm. And those things found a way to, you know, they, they have found their way into African spirituality and they've... Um, Africans, they have found a way to be interconnected, and so we can't say what people are practicing now. It's really, really the original organic African spirituality, and also with trends that are flying around, like being woke, such things, you know, you never know if people are really, really, you know, representing African spirituality, or they just want to be deemed cool, or they want to fit in, so... And those are the things, those are the reasons that um, the original African spiritualists were not practicing African spirituality for those kind of reasons. So yeah, definitely and absolutely a very interesting take on it. Thank you, sister. 
and big up to you all the way from Johannesburg as well. Rastafari, yeah, man, man has and respect. All right, let's we'll go into the next one. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Erin Gonzuni responding to the question What is the role played by African spirituality in the modern day society? Um, I'll have to start off explaining that I'm a Christian. I grew up in a Christian family. My parents are Christian and my grandparents are Christian. So, obviously, as you can imagine, this means I had no access to any African spirituality lessons. I only got warnings. But well, after go, I shouldn't do this or But then as when it comes to African lessons, I never got them. I never got them. So I believe that's where the problem is with my case. Um as for the role it plays in my life, African spirituality that is, it is minuscule because I do not know what are the what are the laws or the 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 advices that are given under this African spirituality. The most the most I can do is live under the Christian guidelines that has been portrayed through the Bible. As you all know, the Ten Commandments and all this. That's that's my guideline. That's what leads me in life. But then because I don't know the guidelines portrayed by the African way or actually the African spirituality way, I cannot apply it. It's inapplicable to me. But then I do know, as of course, the traditional senses, the culture of my, of my, yeah, I do know my culture. So like, yeah, so the same thing. The spirituality sense, the religion sense, and the culture sense is not the same. So really, I keep my culture, I keep my tradition, but my religion, I do put on to God as a Christian. That's how I decided to live my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> So you see the flip side. <laughs> you see the flip side of the thing, um, cause you know because uh, colonization, you know, bringing Christianity into the thing, and you can see say, why that 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 becomes a, a, a issue with the Virgin there, because him being a Christian now, him lose that sense of you know African spirituality. What do I view, my sister? <laughs> well, um, I just think um, this takes us back to the issue that we've been we just discussed of colonization yeah. and you know some regions penetrating Africa and being able to condition and you know change the narrative. So we really can't blame him because that's how he grew up, and we can just hope that um, along the way he manages to find his way out of you know foreign religions because i mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense to say uh you know to be african and not to be you know to not to not know your roots yeah. if you can call it that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. true it's so now we or to be or to be your spirituality through like foreign for foreign I leaves and let's just hope along the way, you know, he finds um, his root and you know gets a, a true understanding of who he is and the essence of being an African. That's the far right. For real, yeah, man, for real. Because you know. Going back to one of the um, previous um, voice note, um, with the, you know, one of the sister them that say, you know, when you know, I grew up in a Jamaica, and Obia, you know, Obia, Obia is seen as a as a, as as a, as a as a demonic thing in in a Jamaica, and to a lot of to a lot of other people, you know, it's seen as um. African African spirituality, Zen, and we we know we know the term that term even existed in the time of the rebellion also in a in a eighty where you know Africans leave from leave from um, the island of Jamaica and went to eighty to rebel against or to you know the revolution in eighty to. You know, revolute against the 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 the, the French. 
you know and yeah some of the birds in them that that you know that meant that who went on that travel you know was seen as some serious obia man you know what i mean in a jamaica yeah. at the time but you know well, yeah where are some sister I, yeah man yeah i i think um you know like they say a prophet is never great at home or whatever and i mean we we, we don't look at one thing the same way we could be looking at one thing and see different things so yeah to some people you can you can call african spirituality demonic it all depends on you know the type of conditioning and how have you been exposed to certain things in life that's going to affect how you view things in life so i think most people are just um i don't want to say brainwashed into thinking that anything that is foreign it's like you know that's the real thing and anything that's from home or indigenous you know they have to question or scrutinize and yeah so most people um i don't i'm not surprised some people in jamaica view obeya as you know being demonic or <laughs> you know such things yeah man you know so one of them things there you know you know the same african people them um, the same African people, and but as you know, is it you know same brainwash, same colonization to said way, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, make could drop another voice note. Jean. My name is Mutingwa. Mutingwa, I'm coming to you from that deciding village in Botswana in southern africa how i currently interpret spirituality is how we communicate with our soul and so we have psychology or the study of the soul and african archetypes for the soul my envisioned role for african spirituality is to provide a new narrative and a new paradigm by which the next generation can navigate this which is the most challenging time when it comes to the chains which are now more mental than the physical ones that our ancestors endured yeah yeah man seriously Seriously, yeah. what's, what's, what's your take on that, my sister? Well, um, okay, I'd just like to add that um, we're sorry about um, the quality of the voice notes, and yeah, we're really sorry about that. But um, from what he said, he said African spirituality is the study of the soul, right? Yeah. And so he's saying, he's basically saying... Um, I mean, he's basically saying African spirituality is the basis of spirituality and who we are as a people. So that's why he's mentioning it being the soul. The, uh, yeah, the soul. That's why mm. that's where the soul part comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Fully agree with him, Adi. Mm. All right, we could go into the next one. Um, hello, hi everyone. I would like just to start off by introducing myself. My name is uh, Kulani Sitole. Uh, in the UK, I go by the name of Kai. So, uh, I wanted to touch um, just a little bit on the uh, subject of Africans and um, their spirituality awareness in the UK. So I would just like to start off that it is um, just by saying that it is very minimal. Um, a lot of um, African brothers and sisters are not really aware or conscious um, about the um, spirituality of their um, descendants. 
you know yes uh, obviously when we get to europe everyone realizes that uh, they are in a foreign place in a foreign land and uh, things over here are a bit disconnected and uh, people do have the uh, longing to uh, belong or to be connected to africa you know it's it, it's always there and it hits you even harder when you are actually living here that um in africa there's just um, a deep rooted deep rooted um sense of belonging and sense of living you know so uh, it's something that we as africans take for granted when we are there well not uh, all of us some of us you know especially the uh, younger generation but uh, the older generations uh, like our grandparents and our great grandparents were very much in tune with that maybe our parents who were born in the 60s were a little bit uh, disconnected to that you know given um, the apartheid era and uh, how things were um, uprooted from the uh, cultural aspects of things. Mm. But yeah, so uh, getting back on the topic or on the subject of how are we as Africans affected here in the UK, we are um, disconnected, uh, but there is a longing for us to um, want to belong. So we do have our um, communities here and there, but there's a um, stronger Jamaican uh, presence here in the UK. Uh, because they are one of the uh, islands that have lived here for such a long time. And uh, Africans um, in general have uh, been suppressed here in the UK in terms of uh, identity. Uh, it's not something that's um, magnified or glorified in the sense. Um, so yeah, I would just like to say that um, uh, there is a longing for it and we do want to be more spiritually connected. But unfortunately, there's just uh, a missing link because of the um, geographical um, uh, location of where we are. Maybe it's, uh, it has to do with uh, the um, density of uh, one's soul or the uh, lack of, you know, um, here in Europe, uh, I just wanted to say. But um, I'm actually um, a Zulu. Uh, by origin, um, I was born in uh, KZN. I've uh, been living in the UK now um, for about um, 16, 17 years. And uh, I do frequent uh, going back to South Africa uh, 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 quite a great deal. And uh, I still am in tune with who I am. So I always believe that um, I'm an African first before um, any other uh, race. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's just what I wanted to say. I don't know if that uh, will add on to uh, our debate. But um, if need be, feel free to contact me uh, at any time on the uh, number attached uh, to the voice note. Thank you uh, very much for um, giving me the time and the space to uh, share my view. Um, yeah, um, God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, man. Yeah man, God bless the eye to said we man, my brother. What you say? Yeah man, give thanks. Give thanks. Uh, yeah, serious, you know, serious, seriously, you know, geographically, you know, we're disconnected. You know what I mean? And you know, it's a serious point what the burden has to because you know when, when, when you travel overseas and you come you come here, some of the thing, you know, certain things you you're gonna it's like you lose along the way throughout the process of the year and time, you know what I mean? Certain certain even not just on a on a African spirituality level, also on a on a on a African cultural level, you know what I mean? We we we, yes, we lose we lose we lose a lot of things along along the way. You know what I mean? Certain standard, you know, you, you, you can see that it drop uh, you know as you mentioned you know is you know grandparents and even um greater greater grandparents you know what i mean the, the the type of standard that they set you know them as probably the third generation i and i know you know we still 
uphold some of these values, but you know it 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 being filtered out at the same time. I don't know how, yes, how do I see it. Well, you know what do I what do I view anyway? Yes, sir. No, I mean I say what do I view upon you know what the Virgin I say. Oh, oh, um, oh. Before that, um, I just like to like to send a shout out to the speaker before him, um, Bobo Paul Mutino, all the way from Botswana. So big up, Bobo man, and give thanks for your input in all this. Yes, sir. And I... then um, with the brother, I I think he raised very important and critical points that um, wherever you go in the world, wherever you are, if you are an African, you will always remain an African, and you're always going to need. African values, African pr principles, you know, you're going to need that African pillar to hold on to, you know, to as your pride and to say, I'm an African and this is my culture, this is my spirituality, this is my soul, this is how we do things back home. And sadly, um, there's not a lot of that happening, but um, I think um, it's going there because uh, he mentioned that they have different are trying to have different organizations where they can meet up with Africans and you know discuss certain African issues so big up to the brothers still and if thanks you yeah, asked far right yeah man give thanks to the brother man where I share them energy there you know it's a real it's a real thing it's a real it's a real thing yes I Yes, for all of the ones them who is listening, um, this is a mindset program. You know, on this part of the program, we have um, we run over a whole part time still, but you know, so it go. Um, this part of the program is is the African diaspora connection, our Afro diaspora connection. Zin and um, we have co host tonight is Goddess Isis out of Botswana. Yes, I. Yes, my sister. So, yeah, man, we give thanks. We give thanks to the energy, you know. We give thanks to that positive energy mm -hmm. that is flowing. Yes. Give thanks, same way, my brother. It's such an honor, you know, Afro diaspora connection because we need this kind of connections. We need to stay in touch with who you we are as a people, and you know, so um, a lot of issues you know, and solutions can come forth out of such connections. So, yeah, big up to the mindset and big up to Afro diaspora connection. Big up to Africa, Pastor Farai. Yeah, man, big up to Africa every time. You know, big up to... The motherland. The motherland. And, you know, more of a share, more of a share something, um, more of a share something that is majesty. Emperor E. Selassie, I um, speak about and uh, regarding religion and not so much um, spirituality. But yes, sir. he said, I'm um, quoting, it is only when the human mind is guided by religion and morality that man can acquire the necessary vision to put all his ingenious invention and contribution to really useful and beneficial purposes. Mosai Celestia. Ja. Ja. Rastafari. Yes, I. And his majesty, his majesty also teaches us that spirituality does not come from religion. It comes from <laughs> our soul. Therefore, we must stop confusing religion and spirituality. Religion is a set of rules, regulations, and rituals which were created by humans and were supposed to help people spiritually. Due to human imperfection, and His Majesty says, religion has become corrupt, political, divisive, and a tool for, for power struggle, while spirituality is not theology or ideology. It is simply a way of life, pure and original as given by the Most High. Spirituality is a network linking us to the Most High, the universe and each other. That's what um, Haile Selassie says on spirituality. 
Rastafari, yes I, balance, yeah man, give thanks. <laughs> yes, um, that is Isis, we give thanks to the high time on the program, yes, the last year I know. Yes, I. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. And um, all the people, all the people can um, link up with the I. You know what I mean? So them can um, yeah, I... get on board with uh... what's going on here and the African, Afro diaspora connection. Yes, I bless the love. Um, to link more and, you know, keep the conversation going, um, please... Uh, Link up on my WhatsApp line, plus 267-7298-4692. Or on Facebook, um, Pumulo Masira. Or on my page, um, God is Isis. Or Instagram, uh, at um, God is underscore Isis. Yeah. Rastafari, yeah man, and yeah, they them can check we out same time next strong pan um the Afro diaspora connection. Zin, yeah, yeah man, only an Amlak live reader. Zin, make sure so they them um spread the word live on yeah only on the mindset program also you know only an Amlak live only on the mindset program you're gonna get it so. You know, tune in, tune up, um, and if you miss the program, you know, if you miss the program, you can um, get the program again in its entirety at uh, Amlak Live Radio Mix Crowd. You know, I mean, you can get the whole mindset program after the show. You know, if you if it wasn't here from the beginning, if you miss out anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, the whole show will be uploaded and you can just check the Amlak Live Reader page. Amlak Live Mixed Cloud Reader page, just check it out. Um, All the shows of all the reader personnel here also is uploaded there. You know, so, yeah. We give thanks, my sister. Great, great having the hype on, um, you know, the first, the first leg of this Afro diaspora connection. Straight out of Botswana. Yes, I um same time, same place um on the Afro Diaspora Connection next Wednesday on the mindset, uh big up to the mindset, big up to you, my brother, and big up uh big up to Amlak Live. Thank you so much for having me. Blessed love. Rastafari. Yes, I peace and love. More love and strength, man, every time.